Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode five of the Get Literate podcast. Today, I am sharing three books that are sure to inspire your reading life. Now, from time to time, even the most dedicated reader may find themselves in a reading rut where reading is just challenging for one particular reason or another, and our reading life falls to the wayside. Maybe it's because we're in a challenging season of life and we're busy with work and family commitments. Maybe it's just a challenging season in the world, like say the recent pandemic, or maybe you just can't seem to find a book that's working for you. Or maybe the opposite. You found a book that works so well for you that you have a bit of a book hangover and you're not sure which book to jump into next. Or maybe you're just in a reading rut because you're in a reading rut with absolutely no good straightforward explanation at all. It happens. Now, there are lots of ways to get out of a reading rut, just like there are lots of ways to fall into one. Some of my favorite ways are to pick up a children's literature book. Now, you know I love children's literature. It's embedded into my daily work, but I love choosing a children's literature selection, perhaps a middle grade novel, to get out of a reading rut for mainly two reasons. First, middle grade novels are shorter than adult novels, and it can give us that quick win of completing a book and getting over our reading rut. But secondly, because those novels are shorter and because they are designed to hold a child's attention, they usually get right to it and they immerse you in the world of that novel quite quickly, which means not only do you get interested and stay interested, but you usually fill it till the end, feel it to the end, uh, in other words, and get that quick hit of, okay, I'm back. Now, if you want some of my top selections, you might already know that I have shared my top 100 children's literature books to read, at least right now in 2022, on my blog. So I'll be sure to put the link to that document in the show notes. Now, another way to give your reading life a little kick in the pants is to jump into a short story. Short stories, for the exact same reason I recommended children's literature, can give you that quick push to get you out of the rut. One of my favorites is Zakora. That got me out of a reading rut not too long ago. Uh, That's by Chimimanda Ngozi Adichie. Beautiful book that just got me thinking and got me over that reading hump. Now, one of my favorite ways to get out of a reading rut is to use the calendar. Use the calendar and celebrate a lesser known holiday. I wrote a post all about it, but it's really fun to open up the month the monthly calendar and see what month it is. Is it National Chocolate Chip Cookie Month or is it International Picnic Day? Whatever those lesser known holidays are, I love to choose one and then read a book on that theme to keep things nice and timely and surprising and whimsical. I wrote a post all about that too, with suggestions for every single month of the year based on those holidays. So I'll be sure to put that in the show notes too. And last but not least, we could always go to a trusted friend, bookseller, librarian to get a book recommendation that is sure to get us out of our rut based on what they know about us. And if none of that works, I suggest you pop in an audiobook and listen to a book instead. Now, admittedly, I am mainly a printed book reader. I don't do as well with audiobooks because I tend to get distracted. But listening to a book while you're going about your busy life, while you're walking, doing the dishes, folding the laundry, or just sitting there relaxing can be an easier way to get out of a reading rut because someone is literally helping you reading the book into your earbuds. But today, I'm here to share one more way to get you out of a reading rut, which is to read books about the reading life so that they are sure to inspire your own. So these might be books that are set in bookish places like the library or an independent bookstore or even a book bus. 
or these books might mention other titles throughout the pages that get your reading heart going, right? Oh, I haven't read that book. But that character mentions that. Let me add that to my TBR stack. Or maybe the book just has a, a nice moving plot where books are central in some way. Maybe the character is an author or an editor. Maybe they're writing their own book. Maybe they are a devout reader. One of those three things, when I read them in the book, a book set in a bookish place, a book that mentions lots of other titles, or a book where the plot is central to some bookish fun, those are sure to set my own reading heart on fire and get me out of a reading slump and inspire me instead. So that's what I wanna share with you. I wanna share three books that have done that exact thing fairly recently. Now, sometimes the books got me out of a reading slump and sometimes I wasn't in a slump, but they inspired my reading life anyway. And so up first for book one to share with you today is The Storied Life of A.J. Fickrey by Gabrielle Zevin. Now, Gabrielle Zevin has some new books out more recently that are setting everyone on fire, but The Storied Life of A.J. Fickrey is actually a backlist book published in 2014, but one that I only knew about and read recently. There are hundreds of thousands of books published every year, and it's impossible to know about them all, but I'm so glad that this one finally found its way into my TBR stack. So this book obviously is all about A.J. Frickery, and A.J. is a bookseller who is going through an incredibly hard patch. His wife has died, his bookstore is not doing well, and now the one thing he was so excited about, his prized possession, which was a rare collection of Poe poems, has been stolen, and he feels like there's nothing left. He shuts himself away in work, he shuts himself away in his own home, and he isolates himself from all of the other people who know him or care about him on Alice Island where he lives. Until, until one day he receives a mysterious package at his bookstore. And I can't say any more about that package without giving away the spoiler for the book, but that package changed everything. AJ starts to see life in a new way. He changes his personal life. He changes his professional life. He makes very nice changes of the bookstore, all sparked by this package and the connections that the package is bringing to him. Ultimately, he ends up changing his life completely, changing the status of the bookstore completely, and maybe, maybe finding a little bit of love along the way too. Now, I can't say much more without completely spoiling it, but what I will say is one of the things I enjoyed most about the book were these written notes from AJ to someone, sometimes himself, sometimes to another person, about the books he was reading and wanted to hold on to. I loved those notes. They reminded me of quick little scribbles we might have in a reading journal or a sticky note pasted into the cover to remind us why we read and how the books can move us. So not only might it jog a lot of memories for you in terms of those book titles to add them to the, their TBR stack, but it also just reminded us that books are meant to move us. And books aren't meant to just be read through quickly, just to add up to a certain number on our Goodreads challenge at the end of the year. They're meant to change us. And the story life of A.J. Fickrey certainly put that message across loud and clear. That's why it's number one on my list of books to inspire your reading life. Now, book two is a newer book, The Last Chance Library by Freya Sampson. Oh, this book was fantastic. So this book was set in a library a beloved local library, and June Jones is the librarian, a very, very, very quiet librarian. She's very shy, she keeps to herself, and she'd rather spend time at her home buried in books, eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner with a book. Unfortunately, her mother passed away years ago, 
she took care of her before she did so. And so June just feels like there isn't much left in her life. And there isn't much left in her voice or in her ability to do the things that the, she thought she wanted to do. But she never quite realized the impact that she was having on the patrons in her library. And so when the library is threatened, things start to happen. Now, initially, June does not join into the fight because of a couple of reasons, but she ends up finding a secret way to do her part and make her mother proud. You see, her mother was actually the librarian for many, many years at this library, and June feels that if the library closes, it's the last thread that she had to her mother. And so the fight becomes personal. Now, I won't give away how it ends, although it is a very satisfying ending. I also want to share how much it reminded me of a book that I reviewed recently on the podcast called A Kind of Paradise by Amy Rebecca Tan. The storylines between these books were so shockingly similar from the beginning to the middle and especially to what happened at the end. One, Amy, Amy Rebecca Tan's book, middle grade perfection. And this one, The Last Chance Library by Freya Sampson, was just adult delight all the way out. Now, the one thing I will say I love the most about The Last Chance Library was the way that June conjured up stories about the patrons based on the books that they were checking out. So she had this fantastic imagination about all of these patrons' lives based on the books that they were reading. And I had so much fun following her imagination and wondering what June might say about me if she were to look at my library history, which of course fired my reading life up, made me think about the titles I've read recently and the ones that I want to check out and then wonder what those message say about me to other people. So that was a really fun addition to this book. Now, the last one, I, I don't wanna say I'm saving the best for last because all three of these books were fantastic, but Bookends by Zibby Owens really does have my heart. Now, it is not a fiction book, it is a memoir. It is a memoir of love, loss, and literature. Now, if you follow Gretchen Rubin, Gretchen Rubin says that all of us should have a, spirit, a spiritual master, someone that can help us bring more happiness into our lives based on the connections that we have for them. And you might think this is very odd, <laughs> but I think Zibby Owens is my spiritual master. I have followed her rise to crazy bookish fame over the last couple of years and have so admired the work that she's done. From Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books to Moms Don't Have Time to Write to the amazing ambassador programs and live events that she does, she's just living the kind of bookish life that I would love to have. And so reading this memoir, and getting a glimpse into how that came to be, starting all the way from when she was a child, when books had such an indelible impact on her, was just fascinating and for me, incredibly inspiring. But not only that, what I loved that Zibby did, because that's how I look at books too, is as she told us about her life from all the way in the beginning to right now in the present, she also told us the books that mattered most to her during those times. The books that she read in her free time for fun, the books that she read to get through what she was going through, and the books that were just having an impact on how she wanted to live her life and show up for others. That is my kind of reading. Now, yes, I love to read just because, but I especially love to read so that my reading life impacts my actual life. And I was scribbling down titles in every single chapter of books that I wanted to go and read and find for myself. Some that I've already read and I wanted to reread, others that I hadn't even heard of and needed to get on my TBR list. Now, thankfully for me, and unbeknownst to me, there is an amazing appendix that lists all 70-something of those books at the end. So if reading the memoir didn't inspire you to jumpstart your own reading life, that list of books at the end is a fantastic place to begin. I can't say enough about this book. I loved it. 
I loved the messages. I loved getting the glimpse into someone else who uses books to grow through what they go through too. And it's one that I know I am going to return to again and again and again. So there you have it. Those three books that are sure to inspire your reading life. The Storied Life of A.J. Fickrey, The Last Chance Library, and Book Ends, a memoir of love, loss, and literature. And so now you know what's coming next. How can we bring this bookish theme to life in our own lives? Well, obviously, I want you to go find one of those books, and I want you to read it so that you can set your own reading heart on fire. But the one thing that all of these books have in common that I think we can take forward with us as a lesson is that these authors, these characters, they made the books matter to their actual lives. Some made a career out of it. AJ and June actually led bookstores and libraries. And so you can pretty much guarantee your reading life is going to be on a positive trend if you are surrounded by books all day. Now, maybe we can't quit our jobs and open a bookstore, but we can make a plan to frequent them frequently. We can make a plan to visit the library on a regular basis and keep those books front and central. We also might think about how the books we're reading are impacting our lives and how we're choosing books at certain points in our lives. How are we capturing those messages? Do we write book reviews? Are we jotting them down in a reading journal? Do we put sticky notes in our books? And might we start doing that? Might we start making a timeline of the books that mattered most to us so that we have this beautiful collection of books that we could pass along, if not to the world in our own memoir, to our children, our grandchildren, and their great-grandchildren? That is what is firing me up most right now. I'd also consider, or I'd encourage you to take all of those bookish recommendations from the books that you've read and read them. So let them inspire your life and set you on your own path, but make a little pledge that you're going to read books that mattered to someone else, mattered enough to have them be included in this book or included in a memoir, and therefore they're worth taking a look at to see how they might impact your own reading life and your actual life too. That's the magic of reading. So I want to know what titles have you read that could inspire my reading life? Do you have fiction books that are set in a bookish place that you could recommend? Are there other books you've read that are filled with book titles that I could create another list and add to my TBR stack? Or is there a book that just has some sort of bookish plot that you think I and other listeners would enjoy? I would love to hear about them. You can find me on all of the social media platforms at Afinito Lit. You can head to my blog and the show notes on www.alitlife.com, or you can email me, all sorts of ways to connect. I would love to hear what books you recommend, and I will keep a running list of them and hopefully keep updating this episode because we could all use a little dose of inspiration for our reading life, and this will be one place to start. Happy reading!